And for the first time in a solid ride carrier's car store career, Zach Miracle leads the field down, and we're off and racing. Lap number one goes to Zach Miracle. The leaders have run side by side for the first three laps. They get to the start finish line and it looks like Quapo will lead lap three. Oh, a pass for second right there. Mini Terrell up and underneath the 32 of Zach Miracle. Miracle got very high down there, Steve. Yeah, it looked like he, he got a little loose going into one and two, and Mini was able to scoot under and drive right by him. And, but a yeah. totally different young man in that 81 car, and now it's a totally different driver in second. Zach Miracle bypasses him for the runner-up spot. Yeah, again, these guys mixing up a little bit, but uh, again. Yeah, Honeycutt using that outside lane. Look at that. He's going to now move to second, does Caden Honeycutt. So Honeycutt, for the moment, up to the runner-up spot, and look who else is there. Sam Yarbrough, that number 95 car. No surprise, he is good here in the PD. Yeah, yeah, it's all a little bit of spark there underneath the Zach Miracle car. Makes you wonder just how low they've got that car, that it's still dragging even uh, after, you know, four or five laps after a restart. But there you see, see it right there coming out? Yeah. That actually looks like something different. I don't think that's the frame. That looks like fire. That looks like fire. Yeah, that's something different on Zach Miracle's car. That is not the frame dragging here. Yeah. And looks like Tyler Matthews has got a little body damage. He's gotten into somebody here. The back bumper looks like it's ready to fly off as him and Jonathan Schaefer dive into turn three. And race control does have an eye on it uh, to understand what's going on. Now, you might not think about this because a lot of people go, well, you're at a short track. Arrow doesn't matter. Oh, trust me. I can tell you that's a big deal right there for sure. Yeah, Caden Honeycutt very present in Zach Miracle's rearview mirror at the moment. Yeah, and again, I think how much is how much is Jason Stanley, you know, Caden Honeycutt's crew chief, how much is he trying to get him to push him to go as he clears Zach Miracle and takes second place as they dive into turn three? So looks like Lane Riggs will go by Mini Tyrell. And, and, Tony, it looks like I don't know if this is strategy by Mini or if it's the car and the handle's gone away. It, I don't think you drop back at this stage of the race. I agree. I think if you do it, you do it early. I don't think you do it. Halfway through as we come by to complete lap 63. Crossed flags in the air from Brandon Willard. Same goes for Ryan Glinski as he's trying to make his way around Jonathan Schaefer. I will continue to watch that battle. I think Lenny Baticki has made his way to the mini Tyrell pit and may have a report for us on something. Lenny, what you got? Yeah, we checked in with uh, Minnie's crew, and basically Minnie's just reported that the car has gone tight, so he's having to back up to be able to control the car. Glensky, who we saw a little bit ago, has dropped it down. There you see him, the tail of that group back there. He's down the 18 nines. Here he is on the bottom. Uh, I think he's decided it's time to go, at least for him. Yeah. That it is, as here goes Glensky trying to get around Zach Miracle. Oh, they touch, coming down the front stretch. Way That high. is for the third spot. Glinski up to third, Miracle back to now fifth as Bobby McCarty sneaks on through. Yeah, and again, that maybe Glinski, maybe he, maybe as of right now, it looks like him and Bobby McCarty may have the best strategy. And definitely not a surprise for the local fans here at Florence that he's running this well. No, he had a nice cheer and driver intros. There's folks in front of our booth position. They're up in the air. They're clapping. They are all about some Ryan Glinski right now as he has moved up to third and is working over Caden Honeycutt for the runner-up spot. And talk about a move. He went to the outside, cleared by the car, and then dove down to the inside to try to take a peek at Caden Honeycutt. Three, you hear him and harden the brakes. Oh, and look at this hornet's nest back there. Finley and company is, hello, we've got one off. That's Sam Yarbrough off in the grass in turn number three. Caution is out. As he begins to refire, don't know what happened there, but uh, that's not where you want to be. However, the good news is the car is fine, shy of some grass, and he will resume and be able to continue pending no other issues. Yeah, Through the KRC Power Steering Restart Zone, Carson Quapple leads Caden Honeycutt. On the gas, and Quapple slipped. Honeycutt strong through the gears. Oh, they are wheel to wheel in turn one, but look at that outside lane. Man, Quapple shot out of a cannon. Yeah, that outside lane, and I was kind of curious why Quapple wanted to start on the outside as the, as the leader, but he's made it work the last three times. Three wide for second briefly. Look who else has joined the party. There's Lane Riggs. I saw a pink car, Justin Johnson, in the middle of that, too. Yeah, you're going to see the comers and goers now. It's going to get really dicey here. And again, I don't think we've seen the last caution here, Tony. Whoa! Or the last bumper tag. 
Lane Riggs into Bobby McCarty. That'll allow Ryan Klinsky to retake third as he's sideways into turn one. Riggs trying to take fourth now on the bottom. Where did the 44 come from, Tony? The back. <laughs> yeah. And he Whoa, gets together. Whoa, sparks flying. Him and Miracle got together. Miracle able to save it. Oh, look at this. Multiple winner and Lane Riggs going down, going third, going for third here with Golinski. Riggs underneath Klinsky runs him up the hill. May have used him up a little bit. I don't think Klinsky will take too kindly to that. But he pulls away, and that's the thing. You're to use a guy up. you got to get away from him. Yeah. And I, yeah. Sam Yarbrough looks like he's going to maybe use Jonathan Finley up a little bit in turn number one to try to get a spot. That would be 14th position. If you're curious about what's happening up front, oh, we got another one off in turn number three. Finley is off in turn three as well. I think that was Zach Miracle up there, the first car off. And we've got two black race cars in the black abyss that is turn number three. Here, Zach Miracle. Zach Bud, what happened? I don't know. Just got real free there after that restart and went in, tried to run the top and got up in the marbles and just lost it. I don't know. Hate that for everyone, but I don't know. You had to have learned a lot and gotten a lot of experience up there with these guys. What can you tell us about running with such a fast group? Yeah, it's definitely different than what's normal, so. We'll get better and come back for the 400. You better believe it. This guy is not done yet. He'll be As we come through the KRC restart zone, green flag from Brandon Willard, side by side into turn one. Whoa, honey cut into Quapple. We saw it earlier, more contact. Now Glinski's there, gets Quapple upset. It is a drag race to turn three. Who is going to win it? Yeah, and I think, Tony, we may see somebody else off the track here before long as it goes side by side, it looks like. Quapple's able to clear for Honeycutt and take the lead by car length going into one. There are three wide behind him there, too, with Lane Riggs, Bobby McCarty, and Justin Johnson banging fenders. But what I saw in that eight car at a turn four tells me he still may be the car to win this race. Yeah, and again, that car was here at Florence in the ice break. Problems, turn three. Brandon Pierce, Joe Valento are in it. Jonathan or check Schaefer. that, that's Jonathan Schaefer. My apologies to the Brandon Pierce fans. Schaefer and Valento, turn three. And we are under caution again. Through the KRC power steering restart zone, Carson, Quapple, Caden, Honeycutt. No drag race to turn one. Honeycutt again sends it on the bottom. Oh, and look at McCarty sticking his nose in there. That might be everything Caden Honeycutt needed into turn number three. Honeycutt noses ahead for the moment. Yeah, and I think if he can get by him, Tony, I think the four will actually probably drive away, but it's going to be really difficult to get around him. New leader, lap 101, Caden Honeycutt by five one thousandths of a second. Yeah, and again, uh, Carson Quapple wanted to go on the outside. He's good on the outside as they touch going into turn three, side by side as they come to the start finish line. Whoa, up the racetrack. Quapple retakes the spot now with 23 laps to go, and they're three wide behind them for fourth. Where did Brandon Pierce come from? Brandon all the way up to fifth. Like this, the fight for about fourth through eighth. As Pierce now trying to take third from Ryan Glinski into turn three. Johnson trying to take fifth from McCarty. Yeah, and again, Justin Johnson, Brandon Pierce, those were the guys that laid back and basically saved tires for the first 80 laps of this race. But up front, Honeycutt is all over Carson Quapple. Yeah, and I think that Carson Quapple, he, he's going to have to use that. He's going to have to make that bumper really, really wide here as they basically bumper to bumper going down the back stretch. Caden has been all over that eight car, and now he gets to the outside. That's where Carson's been running, and he cuts the nose off of the exit of four. I don't think Caden's going to take very kindly to that. Yeah, and I don't think that he wants to try to do that too often. Yeah, if he gets around that eight car, Tony, I agree with you. I think the four car is faster. If he can get around the eight car, I think he'll drive away capture his second win of 2021. Don't give it to him yet. Look who popped in the frame. The two, Brandon Pierce, you might see peek in here because Caden's got to go. Brandon Pierce is coming like a house of fire. He was three tenths faster the last time by. There you see him now in the picture. Oh, and Honey cutting out of the outside. Quapo going to put him right up next to the grass. Gives him a lane, does Carson Quapple. Honeycutt's there. New leader, lap 117. Caden Honeycutt to the front for the second time tonight. Yeah, if he can get it cleared by him, that's exactly what he needs. He needs a little bit of a buffer as he clears the eight car. The four will set sail. Eight laps to go in the buffer. The eight car between the two car, which is the fastest car on the racetrack right now. Carson yeah. Quapple now is his best friend. If Quapple can fend off Brandon Pierce for another four to five laps, it's game over. 
But if Bo and Pierce gets around Quapple, this ain't over yet. And Pierce is not afraid to use the bumper. As no, Pierce nearly gets around Carson Quapple. Two laps to go for Caden Honeycutt. Can Pierce make up 15 car lengths in a lap and a half's time? Well, we saw Nolan Pope do it last year when Timothy Peters looked like he was going to walk away with this win now that he's cleared the eight. He's got a lap to run him Whoa. down, and he is closing the gap in a hurry, Tony. He took four car links out of it that time in turn three, but he may have tried to bite off more than he can chew. White flag is in the air for Caden Honeycutt. Pierce again closes in with it about five car links in turn two, but the hourglass is nearly out of sand. Caden Honeycutt will emerge off of turn two, a two-time Solid Rock Cars Tour winner. He'll win the Aarons 125 here at Florence. And, and here he comes after he gets a big drink of water. Caden Honeycutt out of the race car, letting hear you, Florence. A big winner is Caden Honeycutt. Crew Chief Jason Stanley, Coroner Justin Johnson, is championship rival Bobby McCarty up to give congratulations as well. Just told him, I knew you were riding. I knew it. So he gets congratulations. Caden, I have to ask this question, but we could visibly see how important was this win? How much does it mean to you to be here at Edelbrock Victory Lane? Uh, it means the world, man. Uh, I knew we had a rocket ship today. We just capitalized right there at the end. He tried to throw me off the track, but you know, uh, I drove it as clean as possible, and that's about as clean as it gets right there. And uh, man, I just can't thank everybody, Justin Johnson Racing, Jason, RNS Race Cars, uh, my family, my girlfriend, I miss you guys. Thank, uh, thank you all for what you'll do for me. Uh, just, I'm out of breath, man. That was unbelievable. I, I drove my heart out there, and uh, I just thank everybody that's here for me, and that was just amazing. What was it like in those final 15 to 20 laps when you were going high, going low, all that was going, what were you trying to look for? What were you thinking about as the laps continued to click off and you were not at the top spot? Well, I was just trying to, you know, make him make a mistake. Uh, he was really good around the top. I think Robert told him to move up and that's where he, I was at. I, was, I just went out farther than he did and uh, tried to get some air. Uh, I went down there, tried to pull a slider. It didn't quite work. He got by me, but... Man, I worked my heck off, my butt off, just try to get there. Uh, I'm surprised he didn't almost hit me in the fence. He definitely could have, but it was a clean race uh, for the most part. But it's just, just awesome. Two cars win in the year. I'm sure we gained some points back tonight, so we're going to give them heck at Wake County for 10 grand to win. And all this Justin Johnson racing group has got their momentum back, and we're going to come back here strong. By my very unofficial calculations, you and Bobby McCarty are tied entering Wake County. How do you approach that race, the second of our three race stretch, the title? You know, it's, uh, you know, it's tough. You, know, you don't know if you should points race or go for wins, but I feel like if you just go for wins, points take care of themselves. And uh, man, it's just going to be a dog fight the last two races. And who's going to be the better alpha male at these last two and who's going to want it most? Well, Caden Honeycutt made his statement. He wants it here at Florence. Let him hear you one more time, Florence Motor Speedway. Your winner, Caden Honeycutt. For. What did you need to be one spot further up on the podium? I uh, really, I thought we were uh, really, really good. We fired off, and I guess I, sh I kind of should have known as soon as I fired off, I could put the front end wherever I wanted it. So uh, we were turning a little too good, but I was able to just to ride, and I thought I, I honestly thought I was taking it really easy. I didn't think that I'd have to worry about anything. And uh, there was a few times before the last break or, or the last caution, I should say, where. Uh, I, they would catch me, but I would able, be able to pull away, and it was no problem. But uh, like 20 to go, or whenever we started racing hard, I, I just lost the right rear. I was, it was like a light switch. I was really, really good, and then it was, it was junk. I couldn't drive it. So, uh, so they speculated a little in the tower that the brakes were a little hot. Was, were you feeling that? No, I didn't feel that at all. Uh, I just, I just felt the tires going away. That was all. That's what happened. Well, a great night, and hopefully we'll get to see you do this one more time, or, or more. Yeah, hopefully, uh, we'll see, I guess, but no promises. <laughs> well, no promises, but one promise kept. He got to drive this car, and he drove the heart out of it.